Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda Crow, and I lead a safety analytics team at Eli Lilly and Company. Today, it's my pleasure to discuss briefly the topic of study size adjusted percentages in the framework of analyzing adverse events from multiple studies. This concept is presented in the FUSE Adverse Events White Paper, which contains advice for standard analyses of adverse events for the purpose of signal detection. It's a good idea to take a look at the white paper after viewing this video. One of the things that you will see is a table like the following. It's a mock table and it includes a column for study size adjusted percent. So in this video, we'll be explaining why we've elected to include that. The problem is that crude pooling of data from multiple studies can be misleading. And let me show you how. First of all, I need to define crude pooling. It's a way of combining event data from multiple studies, and they could be actually lab data or all kinds of things. But within each treatment, you add the number of patients that had the event and divide by the number of patients in the treatment. Pretty simple. Here's an example from three studies. And we have, for some event of interest, you've all seen tables like this, but usually you have a few hundred events, not just one. But you could look at this and say, well, in, in the new drug, we had 363 out of 1,500 patients had the event for a 24% uh, incidence of patients who had the event. And in placebo, we had 29% of the patients have the event. You may or may not have a p-value. If you did, the p-value, the crude p-value, is just 0 0.007, which also gives you some idea that perhaps this drug is even beneficial with respect to this event. I mean, this obviously wouldn't be enough to prove it, but it's a hint. But let's dig a little deeper, and we'll see where the data came from. These data came from three individual studies, and the individual studies each had the same percentage of patients have the event in each arm. So in study one, it was 10% versus 10%. Study two, it was 19% versus 19%. In study three, it was 40% versus 40%. And if you just add all those up, that's on the new drug side, 30 plus 133 plus 200 equals 363. And 300 plus 700 plus 500 equals 1,500. And you do the same thing in the other arm. And you get your 24% versus 29%. Well, that's a little disturbing because you can tell that the crude pooling numbers are not at all telling the same story as what the individual studies are telling us. So what went wrong? It's a little easier to see this if you write the crude pooling formula differently. Now, I told you that you just have to add up 30 plus 133 plus 200, divide by the total number of patients, and you get the crude pooled percentage. But in fact, there's another way to write it. You can write it as a weighted average of the individual study's percentages. And it turns out that the weights are different in each arm, and they depend on the number of patients in that arm and the number of patients in each study. So for example, in the new drug arm, we had 300 patients in study one and 1,500 patients overall in that arm. So the first weight is 300 divided by 1,500. Study two, we had 700 patients in that study and we take 700, divide it by 1,500, and we get a weight of 47% for, for study two. So if you look, you'll see that in the new drug arm, the last study, which was clearly in a different patient population, because it had a much higher event incidence than the other two, in the new drug arm, it's only getting 33% of the weight, while in the placebo arm, it's getting 53% of the weight. So you can see the also the 10% is getting more weight on the new drug arm than it is in the placebo arm. So all those together 
make it look when you pull them like the placebo has a higher incidence than the new drug. So if you're following that, you can probably guess that one way to solve this problem is to weight each arm equally. Now there are a lot of ways you can weight them and the way we think is sensible or at least one of the ways we think is sensible is to weight them according to the proportion of total patients in the study rather than patients per arm. So what you would do in this case is there are 2450 patients total. The first study has 300 plus 100, that's 400 patients. So it gets 400 over 2450 of the weight. And so if we weight each arm by these weights, so the other two weights are calculated accordingly, then what we get as our study size adjusted percentages are 26% versus 26%. And I think everybody would agree that that is a better representation of the data from these three studies than 24 versus 29% is. So it's a pretty simple idea, but one that somehow we haven't been doing in clinical trials, even though it's been done in other situations. There are some cases where crude pooling won't distort the comparison. And one of them is when the ratio of patients receiving new drug to comparator is approximately the same across all the studies in the integrated summary, or if the incidences of adverse events in the comparator group are nearly the same across the same set of studies. The first one is a little easier to figure out if you're trying to write your plan up in advance. The second one, you know, a little hard to say in advance, especially if you're analyzing a lot of adverse events, really the only way you could guess that the second one would be true would be if you had really copycat studies which we rarely ever do. So I tend to use the first one to make a decision whether we should be doing study size adjusted percentages or not. Now I have just a couple fun cases to test your knowledge. The first case is you have three pivotal placebo controlled trials with placebo and 24 milligram dose arm in each. Each are similar in design and population and the randomization allocation is one to two in all trials. Are adjusted percentages called for when combining these three studies? I'll give you just a few seconds to think about it. The answer is that adjusted percentages are not required in this case, although there's certainly no harm in including them. Having the same randomization allocation in all trials ensures that the pooled percentages are weighted appropriately. In case two, we have three studies again, same doses in each, each very similar in design, but in slightly different study populations. But two of the trials have a one-to-one -one randomization allocation, and the third has a one-to-three randomization allocation. And the question is, are adjusted percentages called for when combining these three studies? And let's hope you said that yes, because this is the kind of situation where adjusted percentages are very useful. Differing randomization allocations with differing study populations is exactly the situation where adjusted percentages are most helpful. On this slide, we have a few references, and I won't go through them all, but these are good ones to read further on this topic. The first one in particular has exactly the information that's in this presentation, plus some more things. And there will be a presentation available that you can use. So to conclude, crude pooling can be misleading when combining data from multiple studies. We think that both in integrated summaries and in product labels, study size adjusted percentages will give appropriate comparisons between the groups. And for more information on standard analyses and displays, go to the FUSE deliverables catalog that was at FUSE.EU that I showed you near the beginning. 
and thank you.